What do you think when you see this? This floating ball is located in front of the Computer Science Building at the University of Western Australia. I walked past it one day with my software engineer's friend, and I asked him, why is this ball here? And he stared at it, and he replied, mm, I wonder how much water pressure there is to make the ball roll. And I was like, wow, I never thought of it that way. And I'm sure that each of you here would have a different answer to this question. And that's brilliant. Thinking, asking, and seeking for your own answers and questions is the most beautiful and intellectual process that any human can have. Another different way of thinking become apparent to me when I first learned how to program. I got help from who I like to refer to him as a human computer Alex. Alex was my tutor who helped me learn how to think like a computer scientist. He showed me this process of breaking down a big chunk of problem into smaller pieces so I could organize the solution. This thought process was initially very strange to me. This was my thought pattern. Thinking like a computer scientist wasn't the most intuitive thing to learn from me. And our dissimilar way of solving problems got me to realize that different thinking leads to different interpretations, and that in turn leads to different role we play in using and mastering technology. The conventional roles in technologies are the tech creator and the tech user. The tech creators are the people who create technology for us to use. People like my friend who thought of how much water pressure is there to make the ball spin, or human computer Alex who break down a big chunk of problem into smaller pieces. As a society, we often assume that people who are the tech creators are smart, inquisitive, and in demand in this technological age. And without them, many advanced technology wouldn't exist today. And the tech users, which includes everyone here today. We are the people that take technology and adapt it to our personal usage. We believe that the tech creators have done their research, looking out for our safety and providing the best technology for us to use. But what's the problem with these two roles? The problem is the knowledge gap between the tech creators and the tech user is too big. I watched this video of Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, giving his testimony before the United States Congress. And the senators asked him some of these questions. Is Twitter the same as what you do? If I'm emailing within WhatsApp, does that inform your advertisers? How do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? All these questions demonstrate that the senators didn't understand the technology they were trying to regulate. They didn't understand because they didn't know why the technology exists or how the technology works or what is the impact of the technology. As a human being, I seek for a sense of belonging. I wonder which type I am a tech curator or a tech user. Going back to the example of Mark Zuckerberg and the senators, I don't quite comfortably see myself in either party. While the senators are an extreme example of an uninformed tech user, I feel that I am still more than a tech user because I understand how each technology works and the impacts on my life and the life of the people I love. But I am not the tech creator who is like the CEO of Facebook. Creating a computer program isn't what I do best. So today, I propose to you a tech optimizer, a role between the tech user and the tech creator. A tech optimizer isn't just someone who uses technology to do things faster and cheaper. We've been doing that for decades. A tech optimizer is an individual who understands the existence and mechanisms of technology and the impact it brings. They are not technically driven, but they know how to use technology in their best benefit. Should you be a tech optimizer? Yes, you should, and I'm going to tell you why. When I first got a smartphone, it never left my hand, 
much to the irritation of my parents. My mom was so frustrated. She screamed at me, "Stop using your phone! You are addicted!" And maybe it was an addiction. And that was around nine years ago. Today, technology is no longer an addiction. It has become the way of our life, the extension of our cognitive system, so close to us that it were one of our organs. If your body digests food, your brain ingests technology. You know which food creates high cholesterol, so you avoid it. But this is not the case with technology. We use technology to power our daily life, build our world, our entire economy, and yet, the majority of the tech users have no idea how it works and the impacts on their lives. We've always pushed the responsibilities of the impact onto the tech creators and relied on the authorities to make decisions and act in our best interest. The, the Facebook and Cambridge Analytica scandal last year have proved us that we cannot be oblivious anymore or abdicate our responsibility. This is a time for an individual to become more than just a passive user of technology, because it is the fundamental of our today's life. I understand that not everyone is tech savvy, but you can still become a tech optimizer. By simply asking three questions: Why does it exist? How does it work? And what is the impact? And you might not know the answer straight away to these questions, but technology has also given us the ability to search and seek for answers. So let's try these three questions with something quite close to us: social media, Facebook, and. You don't need to know technical stuff inside out in order to answer these questions, so don't be scared. So, why does Facebook exist? Facebook connects people. How does Facebook work? I need to use my personal detail to log in to see my friends' posts and interact with them. What is the impact of Facebook? Facebook strengthens relationships, and that's it. The answers and questions of Facebook. It sounds simple, right? But there is more to this layer. The how question uncovers te te typical technological concepts that we no might not be familiar with. We can use the three questions again to go deeper. So let's break this down into smaller components. From the how questions, we know that in order to use Facebook, we need to log in to our account and see our friends' posts and interact with them. This could be broken down into two components: authentication and data collection. And if you notice, these two com components are so part of our email. It's no longer about Facebook anymore. So we're gonna try the process again, but this time it's for authentication. Why does authentication exist? To ensure that I am the only person that can access my account. And how does the authentication work? I need to supply my email, phone number, and password to authenticate my identity. The process is encrypted, so my raw password is never exposed. Although it is encrypted, my password should be strong and unique because hackers can still guess my passwords. What is the impact of the authentication? Secure digital assets and confidential information. When I uncover why, how, and what of the authentication, I realize my password was weak. It was banana one two three four exclamation mark. I know it sounds silly, but it was convenient for me, and ridiculously convenient for the hackers to crack. I've changed my password right after and enabled two-factor authentication. I have optimized my technological tool by simply being aware of them. Here is the big picture to recap the questioning process. I encourage you to try answer the three questions for the data collection: Why does the data collection exist? How does the data collection work? And what is the impact when your data is being collected? Answering these questions doesn't require you to be good at technical stuff. You don't need to have the mind of a tech creator. Just take ownership of your technology. And understand how it works. Become a tech optimizer, 
And in this way, we are conscious of a fast-changing world. We can protect ourselves. We can act in our best interest. And perhaps when we know enough about it, we can choose to co-define how we want to progress alongside technology. We certainly have different interpretations of this ball that best suits our circumstance. And all our different thinking collectively contribute to the value of the ball. But we cannot contribute if we are oblivious. So next time, when you log into Facebook, use any technology, or even see a granite ball floating on water, what would the answer to the three questions be? Grazie mille.